the door. Oh, good morning. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I was just checking. No, I didn't really close my door so the dog could come in or the kids, but it's all good. <laughs> oh, woohoo. So, yeah. yeah. Day one of the five days to flow parenting. We, could, we can't quite work out if it's called challenge or immersion, mm. but it's both. Inside Mother Rising Sisterhood, we've, it's an immersion because we're about to deep dive into the energetics of motherhood and parenting. Good morning, Kathy. And so lots of the sisters are coming on live this morning. So we're calling it Inside Sisterhood and Immersion. Um, because it's the kickstarting prep to go for where we're going deep for the next few months. Yes. And yeah. it's kind of an immersion here as well and a challenge. Yeah. And for everyone out in the public timeline, it's a chance to join in and see what we're doing and um, get a little bit, a tiny touch of where we're going with the energetic parenting and see what happens in Mother Rising Sisterhood, um, which you're welcome to join if you want in this next week. Yeah. The doors are open just for this week. Yeah, you made it live, Kathy, which means Yay. you're in the drawer for the yes. first of the prizes. We probably should explain all the prizes quickly. Yes. You so, want to do that? Yeah, well, well firstly, um, if you re when you engage with the process and share with us and share in the comments, then you can go into the drawer to win um, at, like an actual physical book and you get to choose because we've got quite a few books. We've got the art book. And we've got... Which the, is huge. That's like it a is, bubble. It's, it's our mammoth book. <laughs> it's very big. <laughs> um, we've got the Inner Truth Kit. Mm -hmm. And the Conscious Communication Kit. And these two are a little more time specific, but there are new ones coming out very soon. The Heart Diary. Do you want to flip and show them? Because the oh, heart, heart diary, diary is pretty is special gorgeous. on the inside. It's like pretty amazing. Yeah, it's rainbow. <laughs> it's rainbow. We were really colourful the time. <laughs> a couple months we made that one. And the yearly reset retreat. It's very much a new year reset your intentions and your connection with yourself and your family. Mm. So you get to choose and we'll send you a physical copy. So we'll be giving out one of them. Per day. Per day, starting tomorrow. Because yeah. you have to comment today to for us to be able to put you in the yes. win tomorrow. So then we'll be And you pick that. every day we just you guys pick which book you want and we'll give a book away. Absolutely. And then also there is a special coaching package. We've designed a coaching package where you'll get two full sessions plus two self coaching journals in between the sessions so we can go deeper and they're like interactive journals where I'll be helping you um, go a little deeper on your self-coaching. So that's like the equivalent of working privately one-to-one -one with us for a whole month. So it's worth $700. And we're going to give three of them and actually also some of them to the sisters already in the group as well. So Kathy is in the drawer now. <laughs> thank you, Jess. So they look beautiful. Oh, thanks, thank Jess. Good morning. Lisa is the artist, <laughs> and I think they are beautiful. It's a lot of fun to make them. We'll have yes. to make something new. Oh, we are making something new. Of course, we're doing the energetic parenting. I'm going to do some yeah. artwork this trimester and create some yeah. posters, probably just a, a few because I'm actually going to be all over the world. It's kind of cool. I'm going to teach from all over the world this next trimester. <laughs> yeah. So just before okay. we start, um, with the coaching package, mm. you go in the draw to win it, but if you're not already in Mother Rising, you're not eligible to win it unless you join Mother Rising. So as soon as you join Mother Rising, while you're engaging with this challenge, you go into the draw. Okay. Yes. I forgot. I thought we had our miracle stories too, but maybe we'll talk about that later. Oh, we do. Yes. We'll talk about that later. Let's get started because yeah. we want to talk to you. So for those of you who are here and, um, well, even if you're on replay, okay, you can fully participate in replay as long as you comment in between, between before tomorrow's live which happens at 9.30 yes. Sydney time every morning this week. As long as you comment and engage in between, we'll put you in the drawer for those books and that sort of thing. Okay, so 
what is flow parenting? Let's give a really brief one minute. What, what, what are we doing? <laughs> so flow. Flow is a state whereby you are working with the energy. You are moving in the direction of the energy that is currently moving in your personal energy food and field and in your life at the moment. You're going with the direction of the energy and everything is sort of flowing and smooth and working out for the best and seems to be happening easily and just with just with gentleness. And, and, you're, yeah. and you're feeling this sense of alignment with your truth. Yes. It's a really big part of it. Yes. Yeah. Most people talk about flow only from one direction of your energetic field and there's two directions you can either be projecting out your energy and be in expansion energy and you meaning you're giving you're out in the world you're connecting you're creating you're building like your energy is outwards into the world that's expansion or your energy is in contraction, which is the other direction, and you're needing to take energy in. You're needing to receive. You're needing to come the other way and top up. And that receiving energy is crucial. It's the fuel that you need to come back before you can project again. So that expansion and contraction cycle in your personal energy happens all the time for every single person whether they believe in energy or not it's always there always working and if you understand whether you're in an expansion or contraction on any given day you can be in flow regardless of which direction your energy is flowing most people think of flow to only be that expansion energy you know where they're out there and they're kicking butt and making things happen and it's all working and oh my god it's so easy it's all just happening okay that is one type of flow but you can be in flow and be taking an in breath like needing to regroup getting some energy coming back in and as mothers that is a crucial, crucial distinct distinction because our jobs are 24 by 7, right? We don't stop. We don't get to clock off. And if you don't understand, connect, uh, sorry, I saw Jasmina and went, oh, hi, Jasmina, I lost my thought. You don't, yeah, too. <laughs> if you don't understand contraction and that you, can, that you need to be cycling between those two energies, then it's really hard as a mother and you get really depleted really depleted energetically physically emotionally mentally the whole kit and caboodle it all goes and it's um we talked about it a lot in a workshop that we did on saturday and if you want to get a copy of the workshop you can yeah we'll put the link we'll put the link yes we'll put the link so we should probably do that now okay you do that while i'm talking yeah. okay so in terms of flow parenting, oh, that's weird because I'm not going to that. In terms of flow parenting, you can be in flow even if you're having one of those days where you're exhausted. And when we were, when we did the workshop on Saturday, we took everyone through a small exercise to determine whether in this moment you're in expansion or contraction. And we probably will need to redo that today for everyone here who wasn't at the workshop. Um, and I asked everyone to put in the comments afterwards what they were in and every single one of them was in contraction which is very common when you're first new to this work because you've probably desperately wanting to have a contraction period and to breathe in and to receive and to regroup and refuel very common for mothers and you haven't done it for quite a while <laughs> the consequences of that are pretty crappy you're probably feeling overwhelmed stressed impatient burnt out dying for a break all those all of those pieces mm -hmm. yeah and the rest of what we'll go through today is actually a lot easier to engage with and to connect with and to know when you allow yourself to have, to have contractions. Like if you are always trying to push yourself out, you can't connect to your true intention. And, mm. Yeah, what's really going on for you? You can't really work your energy efficiently <coughs> if you're actually trying to work it in the opposite direction to where your energy is naturally flowing 
right now. Mm -hmm. You're just creating a big tug, like a big frictional war inside yourself and wearing yourself out. Mm -hmm. And actually on the physical level, depleting your adrenals and working everything into the ground and grinding and staying in that um, fight flight response all the time. Like it's, it's not good on so many <laughs> levels. So we wanted to bring that to the table because you can be in flow in either direction and over the next five days you're probably going to have experiences of one day being in expansion and one day being in contraction like you'll get the whole works Kay and I are doing this in real time and I'll pretty much bet any money one of us will have at least one day of contraction probably a couple and how do you stay in flow and work with the energy in your life to stay aligned with your truth it's a big one and your intention and to have the day still feel like it's flowing forwards in a fairly relaxed and sustainable manner where there's more joy in your life and you're not struggling your butt off mm. is that what we want to say so that's what we're okay, doing can I have one? you can have one set of the sheets okay so if you are in mother rising sisterhood or you signed up and came to the workshop um, you know that we created the workbook and we sent it all to you. Oh, that's hard to do. There we go. Yeah. Um, if you don't have that and you're on the live, um, you can just have a piece of paper and a pen. If you want to get the worksheets, you're like, this is cool. I'm going to join this in today. This will be fun yeah, this week. Really beautiful. You'll get to see them all. Mm -hmm. um, that link that Kaya put in the side of the live for the... You did the inner truth action. No, plan. I think that's that's a mistake. Sorry, oh. it, it it is it is the right link. It is the right link. Um, sign up for the yeah. workshop, and um, you get these anyway as part of being as signing up for that workshop. The workshop that we did was creating joy and sustainability in motherhood, and we did a deep dive into understanding the directional flow of energy, how you use it not just in yourself to create flow. That was one piece, but also how you use it in relationship with your children to create more powerful communication and joyful experience and to have way more effectiveness in um, the way you get your message across to your children and also how to really um, yeah well like we're doing here how to really top yourself up yeah and also how to hold space more powerfully for them yeah and lots of stuff. there was lots of stuff in there and so if you're keen go check out the workshop and the sheets come with it but if you don't and you don't want to do the workshop and you just want to do the, this immersion with us for five days just use a piece of paper and a pen it just means you don't get the pretty stuff okay so today's live we're going to take you through the setup this is going to be the longest live all the other lives are going to be about 15 minutes where we take you through setting you up for the day getting you orientated so for you personally so you're in the right direction and you've got all the foundational pieces in place and we're going to do it with you so we'll share what's happening in our lives and how it's all working for us this week um, and it is a crazy week for us because as you know the doors are open to mother rising so we are juggling um, a full-on period in our business. Yeah, we're doing this process for business and for parenting. Yeah, and of course we're homeschooling our children, so there's a lot happening for us this week, and you get to see it all go down. So I'm going to move to the main worksheets, I think is what to I'm going to do. To desire. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the important piece when you are trying to get into flow is if you've got the worksheets, we're going to do desire first, okay? Um if you are wanting to be in flow, then the very, very first piece is you need to be working with an intention in the day that is true to your heart and your spirit, that is not a should or an ought to or a that'll do or maybe that's the best I can hope it's for. the direction <laughs> that your spirit is really wanting to take you that day. Yeah. Okay, so you need, if you want to really be in flow, if you try to, and I have done this, so I can testify to it, if you get a bit slack on your intention and you just pick one out of the air and it's like... Or if it comes from like, well, I absolutely have to get this stuff done, so I'll just make that my intention. Oh, yeah, your to-do list. Um, it's not as powerful. I would say it's a step up, like your day works a little better, is not magical. 
Okay, so we want you to start working. Good morning, Natasha. Ah, you made it live, which means you're also in the drawer. We'll write all this down later. <laughs> we got it all. Um, so if you don't, if you're not starting from a true heart intention, one that is connected to spirit and heart, if you're in your head about it all, it's not as magical. <laughs> so I just choked on my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's super important that you start this whole process with being very clear on desire. And I want to briefly mention that for mothers that I have coached, I'm sure you've coached these people mm. yeah, too. Um, there is a fear for many of them to connect to true desire because they feel like they can't have it now. Um, it's not possible. They don't see any way to make it possible. They have young children and it's 24 by 7 and we understand that. We get it. Been there. <laughs> um, often still there. <laughs> um, and... They also feel like it would open a Pandora's box, like it would put me into such internal conflict with myself because I would want this and then that might pull me away from my children and that's not cool with me and I just, I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to close that up, put a little padlock on it and leave it till later, okay? And that also because also like your head kind of goes, well, all those desires I have are like paradoxical to each other and mm. how could I, like I just have to narrow the box and just go with what's realistic. Just just be happy with what, what I've got. What I've got. Because I love my beautiful <clears throat> children and I should be so grateful. Yeah. yeah, we are not denying that you love your beautiful children and they are amazing and huge gifts and blessings. But we're saying there's more to working your energy in a really magical way. Mm. And it's connecting with your true fullest to desires allowing yourself to stretch a little bit and really tune into the magical array of things that you truly want that your heart's calling you to doesn't ever take you away from what's important to you it absolutely wouldn't take you away from your children it would actually provide more richness to how you're wanting to show up with your children like how you, you interact with them and also even just your desires around your relationships with the children you can kind of stretch yourself a little bit more there as well it just means that you have way more of a palette to work with like when mm -hmm. you're working with energy if you're if you're limiting it to what your mind thinks is possible you're limiting yourself or in general, like you're not able to connect to more of your intuition, more of your inspiration. Yeah, and then all the things we're everything. talking in here, more of your manifestation, more of your connection. Everything. <laughs> all of it. Okay, it really <laughs> does flow from getting in touch with desire. And it will open up the possibilities. So for those of you who are like, I cannot have what I desire right now. Mm. I can't. Um, I, I hear Number you. Foot. Because actually when my kids were, you have such a non-foot thing going this week. I do. Lately, every time we have videos, my foot's kind of pins and needles-y. <laughs> um, so I understand that. When my children were very little, I wanted to, to do, well, a lot of the work that we're doing now, actually. Like I wanted to be supporting. I wanted to be out there changing the world. Making a difference, being yeah. a change maker. Yeah, and I was changing nappies and breastfeeding pretty much <laughs> constantly. So, and I, I, Making food, cleaning up. Yeah. <laughs> I get how that schism, but trust me, when you start to open yourself up to desire, even if you think it's not possible, you find magical ways of it happening in its purest form without it being in conflict. Mm. Okay? Now, you might not go out and start a business and change the world, but you, you might show up totally differently in a way in the day that changes someone's life. Like, the point okay. is... You just open up the possibilities and, and it, it will happen. It, it, it means that you have opened yourself to the whole array of your desires which come from your heart and come from your soul and come from somewhere really deep so that when on a daily basis you connect with your true intention, which is a part of the daily setup that we're going to go through each day, your true intention can pull, can, can come from mm. a greater pool. It yeah. doesn't just come from this narrow space that you allow yourself to be in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so want you now to have a look at this desire worksheet. If you don't have the worksheet and you've just got a pen and a piece of paper, that is fine. I am going to, there's some questions on here. I'm going to list out the questions 
And I want you to free flow write what comes. You could go back later and dive a bit deeper and think a bit deeper and you probably will get to some deeper desires. But for now, just see what comes and what flows out onto the piece of paper. It's like a brainstorm, okay? So the first question is one that is not going to create any conflict in you, okay? How do I most want to show up as a mother? Okay, what do you desire around this? Think about, like, just feel into that rather than think. Feel into that and just write whatever comes, however you want on the page. And trust what comes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, even if things seem contradictory, keep writing. Absolutely. Contradiction in paradox is not... Um, not actually, it seems like it's an opposition, but it usually is. It just creates more. Holistic more solution. More creative <laughs> potential. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move kind of fast here, but know that you can come back and sit with these because I don't want the live to go forever. Okay, how do I most want to show up for myself? What do you desire around showing up for yourself? Good morning, Riley. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Um, okay, next one. And, yes, you can just ponder it now, honey, while you're driving, but when you get a chance, you can write it down for sure. How do I most want to be? Be. Be slash feel, but be. How do I most want to be in my days? Maybe just for the next week while we're doing the emission. Unless they feel universal to you. Some of mine are pretty long, <laughs> far-reaching ones. Yeah, sometimes they're like these essences, these values that just um, matter like for everything and for your whole life. And in all areas of your life. Yes. So <laughs> Kara and I were wondering how we were going to do this business and um, parenting energetics at the same time in a way that felt clear to you and made sense to you and we realize that often a lot of our intentions and desires um, flow into every area of our life in the day um, which is really good for us <laughs> yes. okay next one what does the universe want to create or express through me okay so just sit with that and allow whatever comes to come and you know what if if there's feelings of like struggle or stress or frustration or sadness or anything that comes up around that, feel it. Okay, don't squash it away. Just feel it and breathe and just keep writing. Okay. What do I want more of in my life? How slow should I go? I think just ask okay. them again because, yeah. Okay. Keep going. What, would, uh, what would I like to change? Where's the area in your life that you'd like to create a bit of change in? What would you like to change? When you're writing this, like I've written that, well, we wrote that question, what would you like to change? Don't write what you want to change. We probably should have rewritten that a little bit. But um, what do you want it to become? Like, what do you want instead? So the question, what I want to change, is to give you an idea of where, what, where is the area that I want to focus on? Then what, how do you want it to become? Okay. We can tweak that. We can tweak that. What's not working? Again, tune into what's not working. How would you prefer it to be? We're kind of letting you just sort of, it is pretty quick, so you can come back to these. Now you can come back to these and refine, okay? What do I want if anything were possible? Anything were possible. Just write whatever's coming out of you. Remember that this is about connecting you to desire because when you are disconnected from desire, it is harder to power up on your energy. You're kind of not really connecting to the source of your power as well as you could. 
Okay. So you're going to brainstorm that because it's going to inspire you across the week as we're moving forwards on the daily setups, which we're getting to. Okay. So I'm going to explain the daily setup sheet next. Before, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're joining now, because I can see there's lots of people coming, um, say hello. Say hello so we know who's there and, you know, we can hang out with you in a more intimate way, in a more personal way, rather than you being anonymous. If you want to be doing this challenge and you want the worksheets, you don't need the worksheets, you could just write on a piece of paper. But if you want the worksheets, there's a link in the description. If you just sign up for the workshop that we did, the work, these come with the workshop, okay? Okay, so the, uh, there's a couple other pieces to the challenge. One of them is there's a daily setup sheet. and in all the following lives, that's what we're going to be doing, just this one sheet, which is why it's going to be quick. Emma, you found your way. Yay. Good morning, honey. Awesome, 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 awesome. We haven't actually gotten very far. We haven't got Emma's far. Sleep. You will be fine. We've just done the desire worksheet. Yeah. So if you keep churning along, you'll be fine, and there'll just be a tiny bit at the beginning to go back to. Okay, so... All the other lives, there's, there's going to be a sheet. There's actually five of them because we ask you a slightly different question each day for your intention. But this is the daily setup sheet. And the reason I want to talk about it now is it will make sense when we do these other bits in the middle at the end. So the first thing in creating flow in your day, as we talked about, is that desire piece, connection to it. And then what is my intention for the day? Intention is... I would say the most powerful tool for working with energy. I have worked with energy all my life in <laughs> multitudes of ways since my teens. <laughs> and there are different ways. There's visual visualization, there's breath, there's sound, there's movement. There's a few ways that we work with energy on the physical plane. Intention powers up everything, doesn't it? Yeah, it, 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 when you're really connected to an intention that feels really true and feels really alive, mm. it it's like the fuel that carries yeah. all your action. It shapes your, it shapes your energy across the day. It's like the lens that you put over it and all the energy that moves through it across the day is moving through that intention. So it's a really powerful thing to do. So every day you're going to have a different question to inspire your intention and we will guide you through that. So if you ever have a, oh man, I feel flat, I feel like I've just got a heady to-do list, we will support you to find a truer intention. Your to-do list can, is separate to this work, okay? And it and you can actually get your to-do list done oh, with yeah. this underneath it. It, yeah. it changes the way you engage with it. This will underpin everything that's happening in your day and it will just flow into your day. It's not about doing something different in your day. It's just about doing this little bit first. And if, like, when so what, what you do is... Each day you ask yourself the question at the top. So they are different questions each time. But um, so I'd say for today, if it's who do I want to be today, and you just like take a breath and ask yourself that question. And if the answer that bubbles up, and you don't need to look for the answer, just trust. This is, this is definitely about connecting with your intuition. Trust what comes. If the answer doesn't quite feel right or it feels like it's coming from your head, you can... You can do so many different things, but one thing I often do is ask, and what does that give me? Mm -hmm. And what does that give me? And I, I don't like try to push myself, but just gently go through the layers, sift through the layers of what that gives me, what that gives me until I get to an intention that feels like a yes in my body. That is like a power tip there. <laughs> we use that a lot when we coach women too, it's <coughs> the layers and what does that give you and what does that give you or what does that mean and what does that mean and what does that mean, you know. Mm. That's awesome for finding that true intention. Okay, the second piece that you're going to do daily, which is super important, I don't know if you can see this, but is work out which direction your energy is flowing today. Is your energy personal, your personal energy in expansion or contraction today are you going to put out in the world and project out in the world like does that feel good to you does um, adventure or possibility or excitement or doing or giving giving starting a new project doing something different with the kids or making that play-doh <laughs> like, but all those if that feels good to you then you're more likely to be in expansion energy and sometimes I find, personally, 
my mind can be pretty tricky because <laughs> I can still yeah. favor expansion at times. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is a bit of a practice uh, in really getting still and listening to mm -hmm. what do I really want? What am I really feeling? What's really going on for me right now? And another thing that helps me is to tune into like where I have been lately as well. Like this morning I was actually tuning in going, am I in expansion or in contraction? And I think I am actually in expansion now. I've just come back into expansion. But at first I was like doubting it. I was like, have I really? <laughs> yeah. But I tuned into like my, my weekend and my day yesterday and the night on Saturday and how, how much like nurturing contraction energy I gave myself and how full I actually feel from that yeah. and this sense of yes I am ready and when I kind of tuned in a little further I could feel that yes of, yes I'm back in expansion again me too me too so yesterday I was in contraction um and I just received like a lot I had a great day <laughs> But I received a ton. And I'm still going to have an awesome day today, but I am actually in expansion energy. I can feel myself being like, woohoo, I'm here, I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, there is a world of difference between a forced contraction and an acknowledged and moved into consciously contraction. And contraction can feel beautiful. I knew yesterday I wanted to be in contraction. Like I knew that's where my energy was moving. I had a gorgeous day. Like I mean a gorgeous day. I'm meditated I had a bath I went and got a massage I went out for a big family lunch with my family and we all hung out together and laughed we like I had an awesome 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 contraction day um, and it was beautiful so don't think that contraction means it's gonna suck because it's and not. It, you can actually get stuff done too because yesterday afternoon yeah. I actually went shopping for the week but I did it by myself and I did it really slow and gently, it took my time, didn't rush myself at all. Yeah. And it felt really nurturing because Absolutely. I was not in any push energy. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the other thing. You can get things done and be in contraction, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't get, like, 50 things on your to-do list done. But you, you can... won't be as inspired to create so much. Yeah. But you can still get your day done, what you really, truly is important, and you can still engage with your kids, okay, yeah. just because you're in contraction. Forced contraction, when you've gone so far past your, I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep pushing, and you get reach that wall and you get pushed into contraction, like I just can't do anything else, or you get sick or whatever happens, and you get forced into it because eventually you get forced into contraction they kind of suck like they can feel crappy if you're forced into it it's very different to acknowledging with awareness whoa yeah i need to move into contraction and that can feel awesome okay so every day we're gonna you're gonna check in main expansion or contraction is the key to flow can you mark the box mark the circle yes it's very easy. <laughs> okay, the other pieces that are sitting around here down this, oops, no, down this side, um, you can choose. What am, energy am I choosing to receive or project today? Now, if you were in the workshop, you know exactly what we're talking about with that. Um, and if you're in sisterhood, you know what we're talking about that. If you're just on the timeline and you're not sure, projecting means what energy am I choosing to consciously give out into the situation, to I'm put kind into of it? Extend out with my aura, like the energy people feel from me. Yeah, the vibe they're going to get from me. <laughs> what am I projecting? Or what am I choosing to receive today? What is the quality that I most want to breathe in every time I breathe in? Feed all my cells with. Yeah. Okay. Now, you don't need to do both. To be honest, I sometimes have a practice now where I breathe in what I'm receiving and I breathe out what I'm projecting as kind of a breath meditation. It's just something I've developed over time. You can do that if that feels good to you, but you can also, if you're in contraction and really big contraction and you just want to set the energy you want to receive today, just do one. Just and do this receiving. will come from your intention. Like when yes. you've connected with your intention that feels really true, that this just flows from that. Everything else on this worksheet now, except for that expansion contraction question, flows from your intention. It's why your intention is a really key piece Even in this the expansion process. And contraction sometimes can. Oh, they're very connected. They're very connected, yeah. Okay, and then you just write whether what 
the qualities are in those boxes, one or the other, unless you're feeling really peppy and you want to go for both and that feels good to you. And it, it can be so simple or it can be specific. Like today the energy that I choose to project is clarity and love or clear love, like a sense of like clear channeled love. Mm. That's it in, could in be everything. anything. It could be anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then down here, I'm skirting these because I'm coming back to these. Down here, there's a relational practice. So there's three types of practice, and Karen, I want to start teaching about this soon, that came from a woman we know who taught about it, Kendra, who <laughs> was an awesome life. Maybe we should link to that sometime. Three types of practice. You have your personal practice, your spiritual practice, and your relational practice. Okay, um, these really, the, the energetic work is really easily covering your personal, well, it covers everything, which is why we've done it, but like it's really clear to see how this is personal and spiritual. Spiritual slash universal. Yeah. Um, so we want to make sure there's a relational piece in here because it's a needle mover to use your energy in relationship. And as a mother, you're in relationship all the time. Like we get that. Yes, yeah, so this is an important piece. And this is the relational piece to being in flow. And the question that you're going to ask yourself each day and allow whatever bubbles up to bubble up, how can I live this intention today in my interactions with my children? That intention that you set, who do you want to be today? That's the question. Um, it changes every day. And you don't need to make this complex. Like no. It could just be project that energy, embody that energy that you've yeah. connected with there or really receive yeah. from them, really or receive their, their smile. Yeah, or there may be one thing that you know is that as an action that would really do that. Um, mm. I really, really wanted to take them to the pool today or something. Like, I don't know. There might be something that feels so aligned with that intention. If you're in contraction and really heavy contraction, then your interactions with your children might just be to be gentle with all of us and not expect much. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean that it has to be um, expansion energy. Okay? Yeah. And gentleness is a great energy. Gentleness is an awesome energy. And to receive. Yeah. Okay, and then the last piece is something that's super important. Well, there's the middle piece, Should which is really important, but I want to... after that, no. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's one little bit down here we're going to come back to because it's an important piece to create the container, but we're going to talk about the middle of the worksheet. And you'll see in the middle, and if you're on the live, I'll show you so you can... Oops. Is that right? Yeah. And yep. then up a little bit. Yep. Okay. Um, that there are four pillars that make up a well-rounded, holistic working of energy in your life. It creates that holistic, energetic practice. Um, it just touches all the bases to be really solid. It's like there's four legs to a stool, and if, you have, if, you're, not, if you're kind of ignoring one of them, you feel a little bit imbalanced. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and each of them, each of those pillars... They actually tie to the elements, by the way. So there's earth, water, fire, and air. Um, in those worksheets, there's whoa, this is hard to do. There's one for each of those pillars, a worksheet in that little book. For those of you that have it, for those of you that don't, and if you want it, if you don't, just write on a piece of paper. But if you want the pretty worksheets, then just sign up in that link, and you can get them. And each day, you're you're not going to like be going back to these worksheets. You're just, you, you are just you are. As, as a brainstorm, yeah, yeah. but you're not going to keep writing on them. You're, no, this sets you up for the entire yeah. week, okay? This is your brainstorm now. Every day you just pick the one thing from each of these, one thing, not many. <laughs> That's a mistake I made at the beginning. <laughs> I put way too many in. One thing from each of the pillars to do. And the things that you put on the in these pillars is personal to you. We're going to take you just briefly through how you fill that out now so you know what you're doing. Some of them are more involved and longer, and some of them are a breath, are like a moment, okay? Mm -hmm. And on the day, you'll know which one feels good to you, like, I want to do this a bit longer. I want to create a bit of space, 15 minutes to do this one because I do want to. And other days it'll be like, there is just nothing happening. Like, there's so little time in my day. This is I'm going to pick that short one because that feel, that's enough to hold me, to keep me aligned. Yeah? yeah. So the first pillar is foundation. 
foundation is the area of your life that allows you it's it creates a solid base for you it's whether you are growing and learning and feeling inspired like expanding your self-knowledge and your knowledge of the world around you and your tools or it's clearing and letting go of what is not serving you in your life this being here at this live is a foundation, foundation. You've, you've ticked it off Tick. you're done for the day <laughs> <laughs> um so the foundation is either you're adding solid solidity to your base through your knowledge through your skill set through your connections or you're letting go of what isn't serving you, limiting beliefs or clearing or whatever it is. Um, and that's a very broad definition. What are some of the examples that we put on our foundation list so you get an idea? And yes. here's how you enter the book competition, by the way. So for all of you who are live here or, or watching this in that 24 hour period before day two, this is your opportunity when we go through these pillars to share. Every time you comment and give an example of what you're going to put on your foundation list or your ritual list or whatever we do. Either of the lists. Uh, any of them. You go into the draw every single time, okay? So a book of to, your choice. Of your choice. An actual physical copy version. Yes. Sent to you. Yes. I'm going to post it to you. And you can pick which one of the books you want. Okay. So the way you enter every day for all these book giveaways is you comment on the videos and today you're commenting on what you're putting on your list one thing okay yeah. this is so helpful for everyone and this is important to a sense of community which is why we're doing it inspire each other with your ideas for how you do this in your life so what do we do okay so some some clearing examples there's clearing and there's strengthening and learning clearing examples are energy healing work like qigong and EFT and acupuncture, ecstatic dance, yoga, therapy, yoga, whatever you use, meditation, walking in nature in an embodied and intentional way, decluttering and space clearing. I did that this morning. Sometimes that just feels amazing. Yep. Yep. Releasing limiting beliefs in whatever way you do. Like you bring your tools and the things that you've learned and the things that really resonate with you into this yeah and then some strengthening examples are reading like reading new things learning like a new chapter of a book one page of a book yeah yeah it doesn't not a whole book okay <laughs> just one page is sometimes. unless you're really 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 inspired and <laughs> yeah there will be days when you're but in you contractions and yourself. you just want to sit and read you can yeah. go there. and it's very much about the quality of being as we've said so much it's about how you be in each of these yeah and then taking a workshop like this or like mother rising if you come and join us in mother rising or if you're already in mother rising every one of those foundation. workshops is Big foundation. Even if you watch 10 minutes of one of the workshops, it's yeah. foundation. Receiving coaching, pulling oracle cards and getting the wisdom from that. Um, learning how to do something, fill in the blank, some, some skill that you're really wanting to learn. Yeah. Now these are just examples we're giving you. This is not an exhaustive list. So I got so, so <laughs> we're, we're just going to skip through all the lists. Yeah. So in your time, in your own time, just write a few things that you want to have in your toolbox of foundation on your list. So that when you're moving forwards over the next five days, you just scan over this and go, today, yep, that one feels awesome. And that feels aligned to my intention for the day. Yeah. Okay, that's why we do this. And so now, write what, like, I would love if you would share what one thing yeah. that you do that feels foundational. And if you're not sure, then you can ask the question, but I'm pretty sure yeah, anything. Share in the comments. Yeah. Okay, so that's that sheet. The second sheet. Whoops, oh, I have so much trouble doing Connection. This. Connection, that way? Yeah. Connection, which is water. Connection is not connection with your children. Connection with your children is highly valid and, you know, we teach about all the time. We started with connection and that sort of thing. So <laughs> this is the foundation under that. This is under that. Connection is connection to self, your self connection. This is critical. When mothers are disconnected from themselves, they are disconnected from their power. 
That's a very strong statement, but it's it's really true. Okay, <laughs> your self connection is a critical piece in in all your energetic work, all of it, and you can connect to yourself on any level. You can connect to yourself emotionally. You can connect to your body. You can connect to your higher self. You can connect to your intuition. You can connect to your deeper wisdoms. You can connect to guides. You can. Um, I said connect to body, right? Because often you're really disconnected from body and there's an insane amount of power and transformational healing in body. <laughs> um, so how do you like to feel self-connected? Okay. Um, write something in the comments if you want to go into one of these book giveaways. What do we do? Yeah, some examples are stream of consciousness writing or any other journaling. And conversations with yourself or with God or guides or different parts of you. If you were in Mother Rising last trimester, we did a lot of connection with self. Tons. All that parts yeah. work, connection with self. <laughs> yeah. Really getting to know yourself, hearing yourself. Yeah. If you go connect with your inner child, you've done the connection mm. piece. Yeah. Yeah. Asking questions and allowing and trusting and the answers and really wanting to understand yourself. Mm -hmm. Walking in nature again can mm. help with self-connection any body practice where you allow your body to tell you what to do like intuitive dancing um, meditation deep breathing meditation could be applied to depending on how you do meditation and the, the, intention the style of meditation you do it could actually be for all of these um pulling oracle cards again because you're kind of asking yourself questions through them. connecting to your intuition I'm clearing the clutter exercise, which is in the Inner Truth Kit. So if you don't have that book, maybe you could win it. Yes. <laughs> um, what My absolute favourite one that I do so often is tuning in to what I'm feeling and what I'm needing, really mm. asking myself what is moving in me right now. What am I feeling? What am I truly feeling? Because it is actually surprising how often we go through life disconnected from that. Huge. That's actually such a, and you guys know, all the sisters that are here know how important that is because <laughs> we, we drilled it into everyone last yeah. trimester. But Taking a breath and coming into the present moment. Simple. Simple. Connection. That is my most powerful go-to self-connection if I'm having a crazy busy day or if I'm stressed or if I'm anxious or if I'm overwhelmed, okay? And it's about the beingness. It's about the presence. Mm. And we are that, always breathing. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are. But if you don't breathe with intention, then, yeah. you know. Um, so notice that some of those were longer and some were super, super short. Mm. Okay. Kathy shared, for connection, to tune into myself and give myself in the moment self-care for what I need. Perfect. Yay. Beautiful. So on the blue connection list, you can um, write, write down your few things that you can come back to and... Make sure that you touch on each day, at least just, sorry, just one thing, not at least, just one thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next one is fire. This is your creating energy and it's the manifesting energy. And it doesn't mean you're manifesting a million dollars, okay? You can be, but that's just You me. could be. Okay. Manifesting is asking for what you want and calling it in, which mm -hmm. we often forget. Like, yes, we can connect and tune into what we want but sometimes we forget to then ask for it this is what i want and put that energy of like of attraction and mm. like i'm ready for this out into the world yeah 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 i had a energy teacher many years ago say you should ask for something every single day and actually um our, our current teacher says that too. I just realized yeah, everyone says that. Yeah. Ask for something every single day. One of the things that people often do is they ask for stuff or they manifest or they try to create, create have creative energy. There's two things that happen. They, have, they try to create when they're really depleted and they don't have a lot of fuel to get going. So if you're in contraction, make sure you're creating the right. And try to create something that's so yeah. out of... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So try and stay aligned. If you're in contraction, you can still create something, but create something in alignment with that contraction, yeah? Um, the second thing is when pe people only ask for stuff when they're in a crappy space, like where there's urgency and need and, crap, I have to get out of this hole. I need to create. I need to create. I need to create a solution. I need to create an answer. 
you can ask for something every single day and you are keeping the flow moving and priming the pump and it's super important when you stop start stop start stop start you're just stopping and capping your energy and taking off and capping and stop and cap and stuff ask every single day for something and it doesn't have to be something physical you know like material Ask for an answer to a question. Ask for a state of being. Ask for an emotional feeling. Ask mm. for whatever you want, but ask for something. Yeah. Yeah, the answer for a question is a good one. Jessamine, tell us how you say your name. So I know how to, if I'm saying it right. I love your name, Jessamine. <laughs> I enjoy gardening, yoga, especially standing in inverted poses, walking barefoot on the beach, meditation, being quiet, listening to my intuition, breathing exercises, pranayama, playing, enjoy and laughing and giggling, climbing trees, making things, knitting, making handmade books, art and journaling and writing. It's more. This is pretty long already. Beautiful. I love your list. I love your list. Was that list for foundation or connection or a bit of both? Sounds like connection. It does, but I don't know because gardening could be kind of foundational too. See, this is what I'm saying. Everyone is personal. You just yeah, want to yeah. feel into it. Um, sometimes I feel very clearing, letting go of stuff when yeah. I garden. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. Okay. So manifesting. How do you like to create in your life? And that's where you can write on the red one, the, the fire red. one. So um, some examples yeah, what do we, we do? have, well, definitely meditations and guided journals and visualizations. I often do it with visualizing, like visualizing yeah. the energy I'm wanting to come in or calling in the people who I want to call in with or the, like what it, using my, my imagination. Hmm. And then vision boards. Mm -hmm. Writing your desire out as if it's already happened or sharing it with another person. Journaling, affirmations or proclamations. And another one is also really embodying and feeling the state of who you need to be in order to have what you want or embodying mm. and feeling the state that you're wanting to call in. Like as if you're letting it there. rise in your body. Yeah. And another one is seeing threads extending from you to what you're calling in or any, like that's just like one little example of visualization. So your, your visualization power is, is powerful. It is one of the primary ways yeah. that I talked about at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so write down what comes to you. I have to admit my favorite when I do a lot of energy work is visualization, intention and breath. They're like a, a triad of mine. Um, and I haven't done a vision board for a long time. I haven't. I've got a very old one. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but it's kind of like a more um, drawn out when you're really wanting to dive into yeah. manifestation. Wonder. Yeah. I think if I was creating something really big and really new, I would do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not to say that it's not valuable. It's and if you're a very visual person, you could create many vision boards. Absolutely. <laughs> Jessamine. Oh, Jessamine. Like, no, like me. Mean. Oh, whoops. No, yeah. you're certainly not me. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I started when you talking foundation and continued as you make the oh, connection. Oh, beautiful. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay, so write whatever feels good to you and share what you do to manifest. If for people who um, are like, I have no idea what to put on this list, hopefully something that we said and yeah. that feels good to you in our examples. So, okay. The last, so, the last pillar is ritual. And it's actually the element of air, by the way. Now, ritual has a funky rap and sometimes seems a bit woo-woo. And so I'm going to explain it really simply in a more scientific term. And I have to admit, I had a bit of a hang-up. Like, as I said, I've done lots of energy stuff since my teens. I'm sure you have too. Like, we've done this our whole lives. And I did go through a phase where I really rejected formalized ritual because I just felt it was unnecessary and it was just adding complexity layers to it that it didn't have to be there. <laughs> However... When you understand what I'm going to say about ritual, you'll see why it is really powerful to do this. And these are this is the one area where I do, and actually my teacher also said this to me, I do tend to do the same ones over and over again for a period of time um, because you're creating the power of the ritual through its repetition. I'm going to explain this now. Um, so that one I tend to do really 
um, a ritual for I have a, a few ritual like a few a selection of them and I tend to just keep doing them I don't necessarily change them every day do you change every day on your ritual not every day but some sometimes I do slightly tweak and change rituals because I'm always growing and expanding yeah and, it's and I notice feel... that oh it just didn't quite land yeah, yeah. It it's got to feel real feel, real yeah. on the day real on the day yeah. and emma's written for manifesting calling in a trust in myself i can ask for support when i need it beautiful felt that yeah i love that one okay so ritual what is it the difference between a ritual and a habit is your intention a ritual is an action done with high intention only takes moments, most ritual. I mean, unless you create a really long, 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 long ritual, like some of the pagan or Wiccan ones can be quite, you know, half an hour. <laughs> that can be long rituals. You can do a ritual in 10 seconds too, okay? But the key to it is that you do it with high intention and the act of it, what we're actually doing on a bit of a sciencey front, take it out of the woo-woo for a second, is it's through neuroplasticity <laughs> I don't want to get too into the science of it but the repeated action with the intention ingrains itself a pathway back to it over and over again in not only in your brain and in your mind and it sets your mindset straight away which it absolutely does it also sets it biologically in your cells physically and it sets it energetically there's a conduit a pathway energetically in your body as well so all these levels the pathway is created and then when you enact your ritual every, every time your mindset knows that's where I go your energy goes whoop that's where I go your body your cellular memory goes right we're here so it's the it's a super powerful way to really come into alignment um, and set that in mindset. It all lines your intention right up, boom. Did and I explain that right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. you did. Okay. And it also really, um, it engages the whole of you because humans are creative, sensual, sensorial beings. Hmm. So when we bring more of our senses and more of our creativity and like beauty and all that stuff into it we're way more engaged it, it brings all of us into that alignment Lisa was talking about and ramps up the power yeah. of it all so Kathy for manifest create I love the idea of asking for a state of being for the day and all creating an affirmation or mantra yes beautiful I love with my affirmations or mantras to say something like it is done and breathe it in mm. it's like that um, the Wiccan, how you end it with, and so, so it be. Mo so it be, or so mode it be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Emma, foundation. Oh. Taking a few moments each day to receive the warmth of the sun. I love that one. Ooh, that is such a good one. Actually, that's one of my favourite. I always greet yeah. the day. Listening to the running of the creek and feeling the earth under my feet. They are very grounding. Perfect. Yeah, and foundation is meant to be quite grounded, so yeah. they are perfect ones. So what do we do so for some rituals? some examples are lighting candles or incense with intention. With, yeah, I was going to say, it's <laughs> got to be with intention. Yeah, not just, oh, turn my candle on, I've done my ritual. Because yeah. then it's just a habit. It's different. Using or diffusing essential oils or other scents. We do that. I do that every day. That's one of mine. This is, um, oh, we're burning passion today. Mm. So I do that one. Daily journal practices like morning pages or a gratitude journal or writing on the daily sheets in this booklet. You can use them, do them as a ritual. You can, as long as yeah. you do it with that high And intention. I often actually, I have a writing candle and a special writing book. So the whole thing all together, I light the candle and the, yeah. and I have a timer, it's a, it's a ritual. I have a writing candle <coughs> whenever I'm needing to write um, a class or a new book or something, um, I have a writing candle. Yeah, mm. and it really puts me straight into and into that channeled state I need to be in to just have it all flow out of me because I've been doing it for a while. Kathy asked, "What are morning pages?" Oh, that's um. Julia Cameron wrote a book called The Artist's Way, and pretty much to say it in a few seconds, morning pages are stream of consciousness writing where you don't censor yourself, and it's like it's kind of like a writing meditation. You're just getting all the stuff. From your head onto the page even if it sounds like 
I hate life. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> it's whinging. It's fun. Just yeah, get yeah. all of it out. When I do morning pages, I go through periods <laughs> on and off of doing morning pages. But when I do them, there um, there's different types. There are some days where I am just doing a complete brain dump and it's like, crap, I've got to do this today and I've got to do this today and I'm kind of shitty about this and I know that, like, it's just blah, blah, blah. And there are other days where I often start with that and then a couple of minutes in, all of a sudden I'm writing this stuff that just feels like it's coming through me and this beautiful stuff that's just perfect for what I need for the day or the answer to the question I asked. Or, yeah. yeah. So basically stream of consciousness and whatever comes is what comes. And if it's only a brain dump, that's perfect. Yeah. And it's still really powerful. In fact... Brain dumping before you try to meditate, I found to be a very important key for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so wearing something specific for specific intentions. This one, you're probably going to see me wear this all week because I wear this mala with a very strong intention. And at the moment, it's really tied around creating the most awesome challenge for everyone this week. So you're probably going to see, I might wear it on my wrist because <laughs> I've got another one on my wrist. I often wear jewelry and I put it on with high intention. And mm. they often have, um, a, a, I like the crystals because I've really embedded a lot of energy into them. So. Yeah. Um, creating a ritual out of everyday actions like a tea in the sun ritual. I have one of them. Mm. or an energetic cleansing ritual in the shower. Like actually having a shower can become a ritual when you make it a ritual. You bring that intention. Like letting, letting go. Yeah. <laughs> and washing it away. Yeah. Yeah. Putting certain music on while doing certain things, like um, connection time with your children with specific music, or um, actually can make cleaning. A, like I, I have the kind of music ritual to set myself up for a really flowing, enjoyable cleaning space. Like when I'm going to clean the house, I put music on. Here's a really practical ritual in my family. We didn't actually, I've since made it a ritual. It just started as a habit. When my kids were babies, like even my daughter, who's now, she'll be a teenager at the end of the year, um, when she was little, we kept putting on the same music when we were trying to get her to sleep. Forest rain. Mm. And I just, I, we realized a year or two ago when we were traveling actually, because it solved all our jet lag issues, that our whole family has listened to that CD at bedtime <laughs> virtually for like, oh, like 12 or 13 years. And um, that, if we put on that music now, no matter what time zone we're in or what's going on, our whole family just goes, <laughs> <laughs> Sleep ritual. <laughs> so that's a good one too. Now I do it with high intention that it's going to soothe and relax and put us to sleep. But yeah, our brains are totally to that one. And that's actually, yeah, the last one on the list is time specific rituals, like a ritual around the beginning of a meal time or around a bedtime. Okay, so now you have everything except for the very last piece, which I want to talk about. But that's, we, quick, we are going to be really quick because we want to do it in 45 and we've gone over. Mm -hmm. um, the last piece is an important piece, and it's uh, on the worksheet it says, what were your received miracles? And you do this at the end of the day or like at a, after a chunk of time, okay? I, I personally... Like it, yeah, like the, the rest of it, first thing in the morning, this I like doing right at the end of the day. Okay, and I actually personally do this during the day, like in the moment where I think it's powerful to recognize it. But what we want to talk about here is the miracle mindset. It's a very important piece. When you are working with energy, energy is a constant. It is always working. It is always moving through you and around you all the time, okay? So if you're not looking for it, um, you can miss it completely. And... A lot of people manifest things and do not even acknowledge that they created it. Like when it comes, they don't, it, they just <laughs> straight past, you know. You want to stop and receive, there's this receiving piece and it was in the workshop, when you feel, holy crap, my day just, that intention for my day, boom, there's a little example of it. It just happened. It just happened. All these magical things will happen throughout your day, but you, you don't fully receive them and integrate them and acknowledge get the benefit them. from yeah if you don't acknowledge them like yeah yeah we people have a habit especially when people are attracted to personal growth and like improving myself it's always like okay done that next bit i've always got to get better i've always got to do more what's the it's next not thing quite to enough fix? 
Yeah. So really taking the space to It's a very important what's piece. Happened. Receive. In fact, if you receive the miracles, the tiny, and they, like when you start, they'll be teeny, they'll probably be tiny. You might have some huge ones, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I want to hear about them, but they might be small ones like, yeah, your day flowed or you didn't lose your cool at bath time or whatever it is. Like they might feel small. I remembered that ritual. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the receiving of it and the acknowledgement of it anchors it in your body and continues to build and grow. It's almost like a double whammy. When you actually acknowledge it, you get to receive it twice mm -hmm. and it just ramps it up. And it's an important piece in your energetic awareness to be clear, just to build that skill as well. But it will definitely power up flow in your life. So I highly encourage you at some point, whether you're doing it during the day or whether just take a moment, like a minute at the end of the day to just acknowledge what happened in the day. And you could just write a key word down there or two or three key words and you're done. But it's the receiving of them, not the writing of them that matters. Receive it like a, yeah, and feel it. Appreciation. Appreciation. Go, oh, my God, there's a little piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's an important. And then you actually see it more and more and more. You see you, it you, everywhere. You become yeah. you, uh, in that miracle mindset. you like, yeah. Yeah wow life's really magical <laughs> yeah it's a it's about seeing it and then you'll see it everywhere and you'll see more of it you'll receive more of it it will continue to snowball and do life. so the who do I want to be today this is the worksheet for today so you fill this out today and um and the received miracles throughout the day or at the end of the day and tomorrow that's all we'll be Actually, the question for tomorrow is what's stirring in my soul today? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, all we're doing is just going through this again, and we're going to share what it was like for us. And we'll share with through. you how we fill out our sheet, like what we're going to do each day and how that went down and how that works. Yes. And hi, April. April, you did, well, you, you will have you, to check the just, replay, yeah. but you did just make it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yay. Another sister, beautiful to have you here this morning. Mm. So all the rest of the lives will be about 15 minutes. This one we knew was going to be long because we had to give you the pieces that make it work, yeah. okay? Um, and now you're all set to go. That's it. I, if it was me, I'm just going to staple them together so that I just have a big pile that I bring every morning, and that's it. And now we're going to experience the immersion and work flow regardless of what's going on in your day, regardless of whether you are in expansion or contraction. Okay, if you've caught this on the replay and you want to join in the book giveaways, just leave the comment. As long as it's before we draw the prize the next day, you're in, okay? Yeah. This is about sharing what we put on our sheets and sharing so that we can all have a really good idea and be inspired by each other. Um, what else do we need to say? If you want the worksheets, you don't need the worksheets. You could have written that on crayon on a piece of paper, as I had done when my kids were little. I could never find a pen. Um, yeah. You can do that. That's totally fine. If you want the worksheets, the link is at the top of the comments in the live. And if you sign up for the workshop we did, which will give you, um, it was an awesome workshop, so you might want to do that. But you'll also get this all the worksheets if you want the pretty version with yeah. the extra information. So Emma, connection, use long stretches of being awake at night, nursing baby, to explore some practices such as tuning into what I'm feeling and needing, listening to bodily sensations and inquiring into the emotions and energy connected to these sensations. Powerful, yes. Mm. And diving into the many other practices you share in Mother Rising. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. In fact, I cultivated a huge foundational practice in my nursing years. Because um, I did lie in the dark for huge amounts of time nursing children to sleep for years and years and years. So where I discovered podcasts and audiobooks and how to meditate and all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's where you can do foundation, manifestation and connection and ritual. And ritual. You could do your whole um, yeah. flow process while nursing a child to sleep in the dark if you want to. And you can actually make a ritual out of nursing too. Yeah, totally. As the milk flows, life flows. Woo. Okay, we are done for today, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. I know it was a long one. They won't be this yeah. long for the rest of the week. All good. No. Um, we have loved the experience. Can't wait to do this with you this week. Much See love, you. everyone. Bye. Bye.